السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له ولي مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا متعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا اللهم على من عادانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا اللهم ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا رب العالمين أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن نزل الساعة شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد وأصلي وأسلم على مبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وعنا معهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most compassionate, the most merciful all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He who is guided by the will of Allah no one can misguide him and he who is misguided no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We do bear witness that there is no God Except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The tragic humanitarian crisis in Palestine. I think this is the most hot topic on earth now. The most. Especially, especially if we took it from humanitarian aspects. Definitely people will disagree if we discuss it from religious or political. But I doubt I doubt a normal human being with the minimum of humanity should be disputing on the humanitarian aspect. So therefore, I will do my best to discuss something that has to do just with the humanitarian aspect. Now, I'm quoting, I will be quoting. I will not include my personal opinion. I will be quoting the Human Rights Watch. UNICEF and the Council of Imams in Canada. <laughs> Just let's go through these quotations so that we can conclude something. Now, Human Rights Watch official website says, I'm quoting some of the main titles on their websites. When you open their websites, main titles, definitely I will not read the article, <laughs> okay? Just the titles will give you an idea now we are discussing Human Rights Watch, which is a non-Arab, non-Muslim, <laughs> you know, organization. And I believe many countries, they know how, you know, just or 
let's say fair they are. Human Rights Watch, their official website, they say one of the main titles on their websites, with Gaza sealed off, Palestinians face aid freezes too. Amid the humanitarian crisis, cutting off vital lifetime would be damaging. Another title, the Israeli government also cut off Gaza's electricity, fuel, water, and food in what is described as a total siege. Now, we are not discussing a Quranic or a Muslim point of view. We are talking about third party, and mostly it's a Western. <laughs> it's not an Arab or an Muslim, because some people under some kind of political influence or the media brainwashing, you know, they even they say, oh, no, 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 wait, wait, no, no, take it from a humanitarian point of view. What they say, UNICEF, they say large numbers of victims in Gaza are children. If someone would like really to be a humanitarian, the majority of victims in Gaza, they are children. Now, another title on the Human Rights Watch. On April 27, 2021, it's about two years ago, Human Rights Watch, they say, an article about Israeli authorities and the crimes of apartheid and persecution. Human Rights Watch, in what pertains to the status of Palestinians, they are calling this situation apartheid and persecution. <laughs> Time. Let's continue. Now, I will be quoting some kind of quotations from a long declaration of the Canadian Council of Imams in Canada. They sent us a letter and an urgent request to Imams and Khatibs in Canada to dedicate the khutbah to talk about Palestine. The main title was Images and Stories of Human Suffering Coming Out of Gaza Are Heartbreaking and Overwhelming. Part of the message. Now, as Muslims, we don't have, and please, now I'm speaking on behalf of the Canadian Council of Imams, okay? They are helping us because I know we are under the shock. We don't know how to act, what to say. Because the mainstream media, they play the game in a very, very dirty way. <laughs> Sometimes you don't know even how to sympathize with a victim because you say, okay, shall I, can I, may I, is it, yes, no, which is unfortunately part of the target that some mainstream media want us to reach. So let's listen to this wise message. It's, you know, I, I, I quoted some of it because it's about three pages. As Muslims, I'm quoting now, we don't have to agree with X or Y group to speak for human rights of Palestinian Muslims. Because once you want to speak human rights, okay, you are with that group, no. Not necessarily, I mean, no, no one's discussing X or Y or Z group. We are discussing this group. We are discussing three millions. They are dying. Slowly they are dying. So sometimes they, you might be pushed to the corner to feel as if once you speak about a children who was killed. Oh, no, 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 I can't even speak about children, even if they are seven years because I might know. So they are telling us as Muslims, we don't have to agree with X group or Y group to speak for the human rights of Palestinian Muslims. We should not be labeled anti-Semitic to save lives in Gaza. We should not be harassed for showing solidarity with Palestinians and their resistance. We should be unapologetic about our commitment to peace and justice for Palestine. Type. Then I'm still, con I I'm reading literally what they said. What is happening in Gaza? Points. Now this is under a title, the biggest part of the unfair, let's say, war of what happens now that the majority of, majority of people on earth, they don't know the history. They don't know the context. Most of them, they don't know. So under the Canadian Council Imams of what's happening in Gaza, they say it's estimated that by now 3,000 Palestinians, including children, have been killed by Israeli bombings since the start of escalation on the morning of October 7th. 5,184 Palestinians have been injured. So the total we are talking about 8,000 plus. This was issued two days ago. <laughs> okay? About 60% of the injuries occurred by the Israeli airstrikes were among women and children in the Gaza Strip. 
260,000 are internally displaced. Quarter million. They were kicked out of their places and displaced. So we're not discussing a coincidence of few things happened just by mistake. We are discussing the loss of many thousands, the injuries of many thousands, and the displaced of quarter million, at up to the last 48 hours. Now, Gaza hospitals on the brink of collapse. 300,000 Israeli troops are preparing for a ground invasion. You know what does this mean? This could mean a genocide. Genocide, while all the world is watching. Israel has facilitated 700,000 Israeli Jewish settlers. Now let's speak about the history, because people, they don't know. We need to educate the people. By the way, one of the amazing good things happened, we started seeing the fair people, the just people, not from non-Muslims, even from the Jews themselves, especially in America, start speaking, hey, what are you doing? What are you talking about? I am a Jew. <laughs> I witnessed such and such. I saw such and such. So those people, because they were informed, they were educated, they discovered. But the majority of people, they don't know the details. Israel has facilitated 700,000 Israeli Jewish settlers who now live in 300 Israeli settlements on the Palestinian land. The US government and the UN consider these settlements illegal. I'm talking about very close friends, United States. United States itself considers that 700,000 Israeli settlers in 300 Jewish settlements are illegal. You know, in the international law, what does this mean? <laughs> they are illegal occupiers by United Nations. And you need to know this information. When you speak with the people, it's not just Oh, no, we are Muslims and they are Jews. No, 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 no. Let's speak with figures and numbers. And let's speak with something, at least, a common ground between us, and especially we, who live in the West. It's not just, you, 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 you can't address non-Muslims with the Quran now. <laughs> it's for you to know something. This is an, a, another, uh, when I address you with the Quran, something for us. How to, to be patient, how to make the dua, about the ajr, the thawab. This is completely, okay, another discourse. <laughs> Now we are under the attack because once you have some kind of feelings in your hearts, oh, those kids are there. Okay, well, be careful. But can I sympathize? No, 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 no. You might be supporting X group. Who said so? <laughs> so sometimes you've been pushed and brainwashed while you don't know. So you need to be equipped with knowledge, with numbers, with figures, with history. So. Israel has, I'm quoting still, the, uh, the, the declaration of the councils of imams in, uh, in Canada. Israel has displaced 5.9 million Palestinians while Palestinians have not displaced any Israelis from the very beginning. Six millions. Six millions. They were kicked out of their lands. Israel is occupying Palestine, not the other way around. <laughs> they are facts. But some, sometimes people who don't know or people who know, like ourselves, might not be able to do it correctly in the right time, in the right way. Israel has literally imprisoned two million Palestinians in Gaza as an open air prison. How many people do they know this? We are not discussing a militant group. If you want to fight them as an army, go and fight. What about the two or three millions who are in an open air prison? They are just sitting there. They were forced to be there. <laughs> okay, what problem do you have with them? Mm -hmm. Close the eye. <laughs> no. Now, Israel has killed and injured 150,000 Palestinians, including 33,000 children since 2008. Not since 1948. <laughs> Just, I repeat, since 2008, we are discussing 15 years just. They have injured 150,000 Palestinians, including 33,000 children. Do you know what this means? What kind of mental health 
families are living when around quarter million are injured just in 15 years quarter million can you imagine each one will be influencing the mental health of how many people around him let's use the canadian mentality canadian mentality they would love or to say about the mental health okay can you imagine it <laughs> can you try to have a perspective towards what's happening there okay one I'm, I'm continuing i'm quoting what they said one in every five palestinians have been arrested and charged under the 1600 military orders that control every aspect of lives of palestinians the number can you imagine which means 20 percent of the pop Population, they are facing something has to do with the military, whether they did something or did not. 20%. What? 20% of the population. Can you imagine about quarter Canadians, they are under the occupation of the Russians, for example, and they are facing these charges? <laughs> this is how we need to address the people, to let them feel, you know, the suffering for the civilians there. Now, the number of Palestinians behind Israeli bars is 5,200, including 33 women and 170 children. Wow. They put in a prison children? Yes. Hundreds. Children? Yes. What? Yes. People, they need to know this. Time. Meanwhile in Canada, I'm quoting exactly, literally, the Canadian Council of Imams says, meanwhile in Canada, media coverage has been extremely biased towards Israel, whereby Palestinian suffering has been completely missing and dehumanized. Politicians and government officials of all levels are vying to issue condemnations after condemnations of a certain part while not uttering a word about the disproportionate collective punishment of Palestinians. Okay, no problem, condemn that side, but what about that side? They are humans, what about the other side? Don't you think that they are humans as well? Right. Now let's continue. Human rights organizations and concerned Muslim advocates are being attacked online for speaking for Palestinian rights and for condemning the Israeli occupation, apartheid and blockade. Muslims and Arabs at work in and in schools are being labeled terrorists for expressing concerns about the human suffering in Gaza. What? So. Can you imagine, when a Canadian asks you, tell him the following. Can you imagine yourself con just showing concerns about the human rights in Ukraine, you will be labeled as a terrorist? What? This is, they might understand. They might. Showing, I repeat, concerns about human rights in Ukraine. Actually, the taxpayer is supporting militant support there. I'm talking just showing, imagine yourself till the one who say, you know because, he said, okay, can you imagine yourself, the Russian media is describing you as a terrorist just because you show concern about civilians and children in Ukraine, but they are defending themselves, how come? Okay, yes, till the Russians, <laughs> till the Russians. Because if you show concern about Ukraine children, you know, a Russian talk person might speak with the United Nations. Hello, United Nations. Anyone support Ukraine is considered a terrorist. Can you imagine yourself? This is exactly what's happening now. Maybe the people can feel or understand what's happening. As I said, I'm not discussing politics or religion now. It's completely another issue. I'm discussing humanitarian aspect just. Because this is the common ground between, between all the people, at least so far. Now, <clears throat> they are continuing. I'm quoting the declaration of the uh, councils of imams in Canada. They say, what can we do? They are suggesting a number, a long list of suggestions. I just quoted some of them because it's long. The most important that I think we need in this khutbah with the limitation of time 
supplicates, make a special dua for brothers and sisters living constantly under fear and terror in Gaza and under occupation in other parts of Palestine. If they are not in your dua, they are not in your thoughts. Remember, Allah controls the world. This is one of their advices. Another one, and please focus on this, educate. They are remembering us to educate. Educate yourself and others about the history of Al-Aqsa and Palestine as well as the magnitude, the, the magnitude of human suffering under apartheid occupation and blockade. Help your neighbors, co-workers and classmates understand the media bias and share the stories of Palestinians for over seven decades. People they don't know. People they don't know. Now every one of us who's listening to me now by default, I'm expecting at least 98% of you, you speak English. Definitely, you live in an English-speaking country. So speak, explain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, ذلك بأنهم قوم لا يعلمون. They don't know. So let them know. And the last one, they say, advocate. Advocate. Under the advocate, the Canadian Council, they say, challenge TV channels, radio stations, newspapers, social media influencers for dehumanizing nation, the dehumanization of Palestinians and erasure of Palestinian suffering. Demand fair coverage of Palestinian voices and stories. Challenge your MP. We have MPs. They come begging for our votes. Literally, they beg for our votes. Go and speak with them, call them, send them messages, tell them, where are you? You represent me, speak on my behalf. Why you come and beg me to take my votes now? Speak with them. This is how the world is working on it, 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 you know, is run. Speak, challenge your MP and the Prime Minister for their selective human rights and for not condemning the Israeli bombing and killing of civilian Palestinians. Be respectful, focus on facts, highlight human suffering and avoid labels. And the, you know, uh, one of the things that you might be advised to know information, which is justiceforallcanada.org. Justiceforallcanada.org. Now, the last thing is that help and protect the people of Palestine. Let's make the dua now for them. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala to bestow his mercy on them and to open the doors of sustenance and provide relief for them to be besieged and to heal the wounded men, women, and children of Gaza and to bring peace in Gaza and to end the persecution. Allahumma hadha haluna la yakhfa alayka wa da'afuna zahirun bayna yadayk. Fansurna bi nasrika wa aghfir lana dhunubana wa astur ayubana ya arham al-rahimin. Allahumma la tuakhidna bima fa'ala as-sufaha'u minna wa la tuakhidna bima nasina wa akhta'na. Na'ud bika ya Allah min hadha al-ajz wa nahnu nara ikhwanana wa la nastati'u sarfan wa la daf'a. ولا وصولا اللهم إنا نشكو إليك ضعف قوتنا وقلة حيلتنا وهواننا على الناس اللهم إنا نستودعك المسجد الأقصى مصر رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا من لا تضيع عنده الودائع فاحفظهم بحفظك ورعايتك اللهم إنهم أهلنا اللهم إنهم أهلنا قد ظلموا بغير حق وأخرجوا من ديارهم ومنعوا اللهم فانتصر لهم واربط على قلوبهم وردهم إلى ديارهم آمنين يا رب العالمين اللهم كن عونا لإخواننا في فلسطين وفي كل مكان اللهم انصرهم وارزقهم القوة والصبر واربط على قلوبهم وانزل عليهم من رحماتك اللهم داو جرحاهم واشف مرضاهم وتقبل موتاهم اللهم رد إليهم شبابهم الأسرى يا رب يا الله اللهم ارحمنا فوق الأرض وتحت الأرض ويوم العرض عليك يا كريم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان ويتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة
ਭਾਵ 